The largest dam removal in US history took two decades of planning. Two dam complexes located on an important river in Washington state were successfully removed, allowing the cold, clear waters to flow freely once again. The results are remarkable, and its impact on the natural world is spearheading new ways of reversing declining salmon populations. Bears, cougars, bobcats, mink, and other wildlife have increased in abundance. Where the river meets the Pacific Ocean, a new beach has been created, spanning across 120 acres, and restored forests are establishing themselves on the empty reservoirs that were behind the dams, making this dam removal project a true success story. In today's show, we will find out why it's part of a growing trend of dam removals happening all across the United States, and there's a lot more coming. The Elwha River in the Pacific Northwest is a 45-mile river on the Olympic Peninsula in the U.S. state of Washington. The river flows from its 6,000-foot source in the Olympic National Park to its mouth at the Strait of Juan de Fuca. For millennia, the Elwha River ran wild, connecting mountains and seas in a thriving ecosystem. There were 11 varieties of salmon and trout spawning in its cold, clear waters. Historically, the Elwha River was one of the few rivers in the United States that supported all of the anadronomous salmonoid species native to the Pacific Northwest due to its ideal habitat. Salmon are one of the most important species of fish in North America because they play a central role in both river systems and the sea. A keystone species, salmon hold the entire ecosystem together. Over 130 species depend on salmon for their existence from bears and eagles in the forest to orcas and humpback whales in the Pacific Ocean. Salmon are anadronomous. Anadronomous fish live in the sea as adults and migrate into fresh water to spawn. Salmon hatch in shallow gravel beds of freshwater head streams, often hundreds of kilometers inland, and spend their juvenile years in rivers, lakes, and freshwater wetlands. They migrate to the ocean as adults, returning to their freshwater birthplace to reproduce which is why they are so important, because they transport energy and nutrients between the ocean, estuaries, and freshwater environments. Salmon pick up carbon and nitrogen from marine sources out at sea, and when they swim back up their natal streams, all the animals that eat them distribute the nutrients into the forest. For thousands of years, salmon have been the primary food source for Northwest Coast Native Americans. They are highly respected and hold enormous significance symbolizing abundance, fertility, prosperity, and renewal. Between 1913 and 1926, the Olympic Power Company constructed two dams on the Elwha River to power a sawmill for the logging industry. Both dams formed a complete barrier to all salmon moving upstream to spawn, and with the dams holding back the gravel needed to replenish their spawning beds, the Elwha watershed became degraded and unusable for fish. It was estimated that 90% of salmon habitat was lost, resulting in a 98% decline in fish populations collectively. Prior to the construction of the two dams, an estimated 4 to 500,000 fish returned annually to spawn. But after the dam's construction, only 3,000 to 4,000 wild fish would return. The river's sockeye salmon went extinct, and native chum and spring chinook rapidly approached extinction. The once great runs of pink salmon dwindled into a few dozen, and they became listed as runs of critical concern. In 1992, the river story changed course, when the dam's removal was authorized in order to restore the altered ecosystem and save the native fish populations. After two decades of planning, the largest dam removal in US history began on September 17, 2011. Six months later, the Elwha Dam was gone, followed by the Glynis Canyon Dam in 2014. With both the dams removed, it allowed for the Elwha River to once again flow freely and begin a long process of healing. Since the dam's removal in the Elwha River, there has been a resurgence of fish species, with ever-increasing numbers year-on-year, year, as their habitat needed for breeding improves. 
In 2021, they had almost 6,000 coho salmon, which was almost double the amount from 2019, just two years before, and more than 4,000 Chinook salmon had returned to the river by 2022. Over 25,000 trout were surveyed in its waters in 2019, which marked a huge step up from the roughly 3,000 surveyed in 2007 before the dams came down. A hatchery has also been set up, producing fish to restock the river that are at most risk of extinction. Silt and sand have been moving downstream again, rebuilding the beach at the river's mouth where it meets the Pacific Ocean. This has created 120 acres of new estuary habitat from the sediment that was backed up in the dams over a century ago, and it's being gradually transported downstream, providing that all-important gravel habitat where fish can spawn their eggs again. The bulk of the sediment eventually arrives at the river's mouth, where it is revitalizing the whole coastal area. Restored forests are establishing themselves on the empty reservoirs that were behind the dams. 400,000 native woody tree species like cedars and grand firs were planted with thousands of pounds of native grass seeds. Camera trap footage is revealing that the renewed fish population and regenerated habitat is sustaining and increasing abundance of wildlife. As part of the renaturalization process, log dams have been installed to improve habitat for fish to breed and grow. Log dams imitate wild rivers of the past, which were full of fallen trees, branches and decomposing leaves that caused sediment and slowed down the flow of water, making calm gravelly pools for salmon to lay their eggs where young fish can grow and mature before heading out to sea. Dam removals are surging across the United States. 69 dams were removed in 2020, 57 dams were removed in 2021, and 65 dams were removed in 2022. In total, it has reconnected 3,200 miles of rivers across 23 states. Ecosystem restoration, saving fish species, and preventing flooding combined with an ever-rising number of dangerous old dams reaching the end of their lifespan, is spurring on nationwide dam removal projects. Dams only last for about 60 years, which means the process of dam removal is only getting started, as obsolete and dilapidated dams abound across the nation. It's estimated more than 2,200 dams built upstream from homes or communities are in poor condition, which is endangering lives and businesses if they were to fail and their removal will revitalise local economies and communities by restoring vast river ecosystems back to their natural state and finally giving hope for the nation's dwindling fish populations.